Hey guys, my name is Emma Dodder. I am 25 years old, and while I work full-time at Watermark Community Church, leading a ministry called Join the Journey, aimed at getting our body and really anybody into God's Word regularly such that they understand what they're reading, I'm also really passionate about my generation understanding the story of Scripture and how to study it, and that plays out through ministry I do on social media, which is something I'm super passionate about because only 4% 4% of Gen Z has a biblical worldview. That means 96% of my generation doesn't know truth. They're lost. And while, while we can roll our eyes at new trends and middle parts and, and all, that, all that stuff, at the end of the day, they're lost people in need of a savior. And we can poke fun, but I just had to stop and ask, like, man, how would Jesus respond to that 96%? All throughout the book of Matthew, we actually over and over again, we see how the crowds respond to Jesus. When he finishes the Sermon on the Mount, they're astonished. When he calms the storm, the disciples, so that one's a little different, they marvel. Who is this guy? When he, when he heals the man who's paralyzed, the fear of the Lord increases and the people glorify God. When the mute man speaks, again, they marvel. But in Matthew chapter nine, we get something different. Whereas Matthew could, could have continued with the crowd's responses, we see how Jesus responds to the crowds. And, and I believe this is how he'd respond to the 96% of my generation who don't know him. Matthew 9, 36, when he saw the crowds, he looked on them with compassion helpless and harassed like sheep in need of a shepherd. He had compassion. That was his attitude toward the crowds. And I believe that should be our attitude toward the 96% of my generation who don't know Jesus. So when you, when you think about reaching Gen Z, what is your attitude? Is it marked by compassion? Do you want to see a generation come to know Jesus? Do you see a need and want to meet it? And then if so, You've got to walk authentically. When it comes to reaching Gen Z, reality and relationship are of equal importance. We got a lot of questions about the Bible, about God, and you might be the expert, but you're only the expert we want to listen to if you first earned our trust. Uh, we actually see this evangelism principle in John chapter four, the woman at the well. She meets with Jesus, he offers her living water, she returns to the town and she's like, hey, come meet this guy. He told me everything I ever did all her sexual sin on display. We fast forward to the end of the chapter and we read, many believed because of that woman's testimony. As you lead Gen Z, do your college students know that you're a real person, that you're a broken sinner, you're not perfect? That's relatable. It's interesting, Barna did this study on, on Gen Z and believing in God. The 96% that don't have a biblical worldview, what's the barrier? And they found that the biggest issue wasn't, wasn't a doubt that said, hey, I don't know if God could forgive my biggest sins. It, it was a struggle to reconcile the existence of a good, loving, perfect God with the evil we so very clearly see in our world today. It's not just an authentic testimony, it's an authentic representation of God's character. How does real truth coincide with reality today? That's what Gen Z needs to hear. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them in truth. Jesus prays, my word is truth. And as you do that, as you evaluate your attitude, as you walk with authenticity, such that you can present really the way that you, you struggle to wrestle with the things of this world, Gen Z will want to listen. How do you equip Gen Z? You approach without assumptions and you adapt. In Acts 8, we get the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. And Philip goes up to him and he's like, hey, do you, do you understand what you're reading? And the guy says, how will I understand unless somebody teaches me, unless someone shows me? Odds are, the young adults you're leading don't know as much as you might think they do. Maybe they can talk Calvinism or predestination all day long, but they don't know the significance of Genesis 3.15 or the fact that the whole Bible is one story. The Old Testament relates to the new. They're missing some of the basics. Gone are the days of thinking, hey, you grew up in church, you know your stuff. Just because one of my peers grew up in church doesn't necessarily mean that they've been discipled. Resist the urge to make assumptions. Don't assume, and then we've got to adapt. If we want to reach the next generation, we've got to adapt. We see this with Paul. He wanted to become all things to all people, such that by any means possible, he might save some. What a great heart posture. He wasn't saying, I'm gonna compromise. He was saying, hey, the things that are amoral, I'm gonna hold them loosely, because I care about reaching people with the gospel. And the biggest way we see that play out with Gen Z is social media. There's a reason we don't sing hymns in most churches today. 
things have changed. The instruments on stage look different. The way we sit in churches look different. The way Sunday school operates is different. Now we've got life groups and community groups and D groups and all, all the different stuff that by all means possible we might save some. So when we think about the next generation and social media, we're so quick to roll our eyes. But what if Social media was the means by which the young adults or college students in your ministry could make waves for the kingdom and be ambassadors for Christ on the internet. What if a young adult or college student in your ministry said that that's what they felt God was calling them to do? Would you be skeptical, roll your eyes, encourage them, champion them? How would you think about it? Would you be willing to use social media to reach the next generation? And hear me, for some, you're right. It's a big source of temptation. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. I'm not saying to compromise. But consider, what if there's one student or one young adult in your ministry that God wants to use to make a kingdom impact on the internet and they're just waiting for a Paul to come alongside them? It could be you. And it's not too late.